More San Diego businesses are one step closer to reopening with safety modifications. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. The County Board of Supervisors voted unanimously to accelerate deeper into phase two of reopening our local economy. The board is also asking the governor for the green light to start phase three early. But as News 8's Richard Allen reports, not all supervisors are on board with that. Well, that's right. The county's plan now goes to the governor for his approval. Now, leading up to today's vote, the county's public health officer, Dr. Wilma Wooten, made it clear San Diego is meeting the state's revised metrics. San Diego County is ready to move to accelerated stage two. The Board of Supervisors unanimously agreed to the acceleration, which would permit the reopening of in-store retail and dine-in restaurants, as well as swap meets, provided these businesses make certain safety modifications, allowing for social distancing. If the governor approves the plan, these reopenings could take place as soon as Wednesday. We have a plan before us that is a very responsible plan it's based on facts. It's based on science. The board also went a step further, voting four to one to ask the governor's permission for a pilot program to enter into phase three reopenings as early as this Friday. This would include hair and nail salons, fitness centers, and condo or apartment complex swimming pools capped at 25% capacity, youth sports, and outdoor religious services. Supervisor Jim Desmond said by not reopening the economy, we risk an even more serious health crisis. You know, when lives are ruined from financial devastation and staying at home it has its own behavioral health issues. Supervisor Nathan Fletcher was the lone holdout on this pilot program. While he supports accelerating into phase two, he cautioned against rushing too quickly into phase three before the state does. I certainly understand the tremendous economic impact uh, that this is having, and I understand the tremendous pressure uh, that people are feeling, uh, but I think that the uh, Lessons of history and lessons of the present with a number of our countries guide us uh, to a belief that doing this in a, a thoughtful and methodical ways. And Supervisor Fletcher added that Governor Newsom himself has said that California could be ready to enter into phase three on a statewide level in just a matter of weeks in early June. Back to you. Even when restaurants are allowed to have customers dine in, it will still be tough to make a profit. The California Restaurant Association estimates 30% of restaurants will close for good in the next 16 to 18 months. But there is a plan in, on the table in North Park that could help save some of them. News 8's Abby Alford explains. North Park and other neighborhoods are filled with small, cozy restaurants, but with the six foot ruling, they wouldn't be able to serve at full capacity. But imagine 30th Street closed down during peak hours with dining room tables so they could serve at full capacity. Imagine the cars gone and dining tables and chairs on 30th Street, something like you would see in Europe. I think that, that would be kind of nice if it was like spilling out onto the streets. Mixed reactions from non restaurants. I'm a new business. I don't have the ability to survive again with street closures. If it's good for the neighborhood, it's good for all of us in the neighborhood. The North Park Main Street Association pitched the open air pilot proposal to the North Park Planning Committee Tuesday night that would allow eateries to expand dining tables and chairs on 30th between University and Polk over two weeks from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Thursday to Saturday. Other neighborhoods are considering similar right away options. What we hope to do is provide a lifeline for our businesses. Concerns about bus routes, parking, but there was an outpouring of support. We'd love to see everything open back yeah, up. Yeah, we would love to see it open up and have a chance to go and, and like eat at all our favorite places yeah. again. Reservations, no gathering, five only at a table, and no longer than 90 minutes. Of course, the six feet social distancing, mask, and this would only be short term looking to rush this. We want to do it the right way. We want it to work for everybody. Restaurants like Crazy Burger, which is only 1,700 square feet, are cooked about the idea. Being able to utilize that and, and being able to keep our head count up, as well as I think make a lot of the customers feel safe. And safe to save the heart of the neighborhoods. We are amenable and open-minded and just courteous and thoughtful and try to consider other people's sentiments. I think something like this is a perfect compromise. And with that, the board approved it. The pilot still needs city approval. A spokesperson for the city sent us a statement. It says that it is investigating an emergency ordinance that would allow this open air concept specifically for restaurants. Thank you, Abby. Today, local leaders also freed up federal funds to help San Diegans impacted by the pandemic and improve the region's response to the virus. 
The Board of Supervisors passed a COVID stimulus package, which includes $100 million for virus testing, tracing and treatment, as well as $17 million to help restaurants and small businesses. Also passed today, a measure to extend the freeze on evictions in the city of San Diego through the end of June, and that applies to both commercial and residential properties. And the San Diego City Council unanimously approved matching $5 million in stimulus money to provide child care to essential workers. The number of coronavirus cases in the county now tops 6,000. Health officials announced 80 new cases of COVID-19 out of 2,600 tests performed. That's a positive rate of 3%. The 14 day rolling average is down to 3.9%. The county reported 11 new deaths, bringing that total to 222. Hospitals near the U.S. Mexico border in California are dealing with a surge in coronavirus cases right now. Imperial County's only two hospitals were forced to stop admitting new COVID patients today after hitting maximum capacity. The spike seems to be among U.S. citizens who live in Mexicali. 65 patients were admitted to El Centro Regional Medical Center last night alone. They're coming to us because, unfortunately, the, there was an announcement, or our understanding is that the hospitals there are not accepting COVID patients. The emergency rooms of both hospitals have imposed a divert order requiring any additional COVID-19 cases be redirected to other medical facilities in the region. The U.S. Border Patrol in San Diego says it's ramping up repatriation flights to Mexico starting today due to coronavirus concerns. News 8's Marcella Lee explains what prompted the efforts and where those flights are heading. Mexican nationals caught entering the U.S. illegally here in Southern California will be quickly processed, then in most cases be put on a repatriation flight from San Diego on a 1,400-mile trip to Mexico City. We have seen quite a surge from Mexico and recidivists, and what I mean by that is people illegally crossing the border more than once, sometimes up to 10 times. Border Patrol agent Justin Castrojon says between March 20th and May 15th, 78% of people caught entering the U.S. illegally again after being deported were Mexican nationals. So the solution is a ramp up of repatriation flights and a joint effort by the Border Patrol, ICE and the government of Mexico. This is something we've used in years past and it has worked. It's a it's a very good deterrent and it's something that we need to to have in place to uh, to mitigate this this pandemic. Just one year ago, the Border Patrol sent multiple flights filled with illegal border crossers here to San Diego to ease overcrowding in Texas facilities. Now the flights will be taking off from San Diego, bound for Mexico City. They will put on a mask and will wear that mask for the entirety of the flight. Castrojon doesn't know yet how frequently the planes will depart, but says the processing time will be quick. The window that we are shooting for with the Border Patrol is between 24 hours and 36 hours. Now that's a very short amount of time to intercept someone there at the border who has crossed the border illegally, arrange them for a flight, have a health screening. He says those who show symptoms of COVID-19 will not be allowed to fly until they are well. The agency's overall goal is to reduce the surge of people trying to cross illegally and control the spread of the coronavirus along the border. The Otay Mesa Detention Center has had one detainee die from COVID-19. 200 others have tested positive. This is a great effort to protect the men and women at the port of entry, the men and women of the Border Patrol and our contractors, and also the people that illegally cross the border every single day. Federal officials hope these measures deter people from crossing the border illegally, both by land and by water. Just yesterday, 15 immigrants were rescued off the surf of Point Loma Nazarene University and will likely find themselves on a repatriation flight in the coming days. Thanks, Marcella. After being sidelined seven weeks by a coronavirus outbreak, the USS Theodore Roosevelt is heading back out to sea this week. The San Diego-based carrier has been docked in Guam since late March after at least 1,200 sailors tested positive. More than 4,000 sailors were moved off the ship, one of whom died, although 14 sailors retested positive after being let on board last week. The ship's captain is confident that his crew will be safe. The virus keeps changing the rules. Uh, we are leveling the playing field every time uh, we have more information. Around 1,800 of the Roosevelt's 5,000 sailors will stay in quarantine in Guam when the ship departs in a few days. It's unknown how soon the Roosevelt will return to San Diego. Nearly 92,000 Americans have now died from COVID-19 as cases nationwide topped 1.5 million today. 
This as all 50 states have started to ease coronavirus related restrictions and President Trump again said he's taking an unproven anti-malarial drug. Although no studies have found that hydroxychloroquine can prevent or cure COVID-19 and trials have revealed dangerous side effects, the president says he's ignoring the research. There was a false study done where they gave it to very sick people. I think it's worth it as a line of defense. Also today, the Treasury Department said the federal government has distributed nearly $1 trillion of federal relief aid. That's about a third of what's been approved by Congress so far. Hundreds of UC San Diego students have been tested for coronavirus as part of a new university program to start classes back up again in the fall. University officials launched the Return to Learn program to widely test the student body to get the campus ready for in-person learning. This is an innovative approach to use self-administered testing. The testing itself takes a little under 10 minutes. This is an important step to opening their campus, and they want their campus to come back. So far, more than 600 students have been tested using self-administered tests. The university also has plans for housing and isolation should students become infected. California's staggering $54 billion budget deficit could hit students hard this year. Tonight, San Diego Unified is one of several districts in the state warning that Governor Newsom's proposed cuts to schools could impact their reopening plans. News 8's Lamore Abrams explains what it could mean for our region. Schools here in San Diego still plan on reopening those gates on August 31st, but how limited that reopening will be depends on how much the state slashes from their budgets. I know this is the last thing uh, that uh, our partners uh, uh, want to hear. California Governor Gavin Newsom says coronavirus has put the world's fifth largest economy in such deep financial trouble. He's asking public schools to take a $7 billion hit. Unfortunately, we're in a position where it's required of all of us. But severe school budget cuts come at a time when educators are asking for more money, hundreds of millions of dollars more, just to safely reopen this fall. It is the simple math that every organization, business, church, churches I'm sure are also looking at. San Diego Unified Superintendent Cindy Martin says cover. the cost of distance learning alone is at $30 million. Add to that additional spending on technology, protective equipment, cleaning supplies, janitorial costs needed to sanitize classrooms, more nurses to take temperatures, counselors for students with mental health needs, and of course, smaller socially distanced classes. They were very excited to be here, sat down in their desks. This Bay Area classroom experimenting with just that, placing desks inside taped boxes and setting an example for districts everywhere. And we're now measuring out how big are our classrooms, how far apart can we put kids to stay within the six feet apart. Martin so eager to stick to her August reopening timeline, she joined the state's largest district, urging legislators to consider alternatives to deep cuts, like tapping into the state's rainy day fund. Zero of the rainy day fund has been used for education. Newsom says the deficit is so large, it'll swallow the state's reserves. So where does that leave official reopening plans? There's a long road ahead of us before those dis final decisions are made. And district officials are scheduled to meet next month to nail down those plans. As for legislators, several Republican and Democratic Assembly members are signaling they may favor adding, not slashing, funding for schools. Thank you, Lamar. A growing problem across California tonight as more people are using strong disinfectants to clean groceries before taking them inside their homes. Poison control officials say exposure calls have tripled since February. Instead of strong disinfectants, don't use them. Experts say you can use gloves and make sure to take them off correctly to reduce risk of infection and to keep your household safe. Popular retailer Pier One is announcing that it's closing all 540 of its stores, another casualty of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Texas-based company says it wasn't able to find someone to buy out its brand after filing for bankruptcy protection earlier this year. Pier One joins other retailers shutting down in the crisis, including J. Crew, Neiman Marcus and J.C. Penney, that all declared for bankruptcy this month. Facebook wants to make it easier for small businesses to stay afloat during the coronavirus pandemic, but says it's also to protect your privacy. We're not going to tell anyone what you're buying or your shopping history. 
um, a, a, across our services without your permission. Um, and that's not, that's not really a big part of this experience. This is really more about people being able to connect with uh, the small businesses that they care about. Facebook Shops lets users set up storefronts on the website with little overhead, and the company says it's a way for them to stay afloat during the revenue crush of the pandemic. Lions, tigers, and bears is a much-loved exotic animal sanctuary in Alpine, but the nonprofit is struggling during the pandemic. Donations have plunged by 40%, and they still have 65 very hungry mouths to feed. They've been forced to lay off staff as well and turn away volunteers. It means a lot more work for the, you know, the few of us that are here taking care of the animals. The sanctuary has been closed to the public, but they hope to reopen for private visits sometime next week. For more information or to donate, click on the hot button at CBS8.com. More national parks are opening up across the country with new restrictions. Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming is now open for day visitors only and thousands are already streaming in. Rangers say among them, few visitors were wearing masks and they had to disperse several crowds. Closer to home, Joshua Tree National Park also reopened. All roads, trails and individual campsites are open, but visitor centers and group campsites are closed. The campsites are first come, first served all summer. Oh, it is a gorgeous time of year to get out and enjoy those parks and campgrounds, Carlene, provided we all do it safely. That's right, Barbara Lee, especially with this weather. Today was great. We had a variety. We had some drizzle this morning, saw sunshine, a little bit cooler than it should be for May, but it was still pretty nice. And as we go into the week ahead, we're talking about a warm-up, so gradually getting there as we close out the work week. The weekend's looking good for Memorial Day weekend and then big heat next week. Before we get to that, let's go ahead and take a look at some pictures that were sent in. Our first picture, some fluffy waves or sea foam, and that's what Renee captured in Encinitas went ahead and sent in this picture. I love this picture and what's not to love? This is so cute. So Taban went ahead and took her niece and nephew to OB to enjoy a nice beach day and captured this picture of them holding hands. You have the sunshine going, you have a great shot of the pier and it's just a beautiful picture overall. Thank you for sharing. Also, Norman was strolling through downtown, saw some sunshine and took this picture, really cool shot. And also another person who was just strolling through Solana Beach and went ahead and captured the beauty all around her so uh, Talia took this picture went ahead and sent it in and she calls this picture moment of zen uh, Heather went out there captured a gorgeous sunset in La Jolla if you want to send in your pictures weather at kfmb.com I would love to feature them right here on our newscast taking a look at those temperatures as I mentioned we were cooler than average from the inland valleys all the way towards the desert now, it was more of a difference for the desert, especially with 18 degrees below average. Said goodbye to the 90s for Borrego Springs today at 76 degrees. 68 degrees was the high today for Ramona, and actually a couple degrees above average for downtown. Taking a look at temperatures right now, it kind of feels a little bit more reminiscent of winter in the mountains, especially with 30s. You have near freezing temperatures for Palomar Mountain as well as 35 degrees currently for Mount Laguna, 47 degrees for Ramona, 46 for Camp. 62 degrees Chula Vista, 64 for Borrego Springs, 65 for downtown. So we do we still have the winds picking up, excuse me, and we're seeing double digits right now for Julian as well as Malaguda and for Boulevard, gusts still picking up and that will calm down as we hit tomorrow's forecast. So next couple of days, keep in mind, cooler than average temperatures now, but we're gonna warm up and we have a repeat performance that will be on Friday night into Saturday morning, much like what we just had, light showers, being possible with a deepening of the marine layer from an area of low pressure that's going to move in. That will bring temperatures to start off the weekend a little bit cooler, but then we're warming up by next week. The upper 80s to low 90s will return to the inland valleys as well as the mountains. And don't get used to the cooler than average temperatures in the desert. Triple digit heat next week. Back to you. That is a nice stretch of weather that we get to enjoy there, Carlene. Oh, you got to love the sunshine. <laughs> right. Get outside and soak it up. Thanks.